Good morning and welcome for joining me in this webinar this morning about open access publishing opportunities for authors from Zambia through IFL agreements. My name is Romy Beard. I'm the um, IFL licensing program manager and I'll talk you through the different agreements that we have, how you can find the journal titles and so on. Um, I've, I'm recording this webinar, so if you're watching it later, thank you for watching it and anyone who's um, attended or registered for the webinar, I will send you the recording and the link to the slides as well. So you don't need to take lots of notes. Here's a brief agenda for today. First, I want to talk a little bit about what are publishing um, fees, article processing charges. Um, I want to discuss a little bit about Zambia publishing output. Um, then look at Eiffel agreements and title lists and communication to researchers. I'm so sorry about the noise. Um, I've got some work getting done today and they said they weren't going to be noisy. So I hope, I hope it's short lived <laughs> and I hope you can still hear me. Okay then. Um, so what are article processing charges? Article processing charges are fees that authors pay in order to have the article published in open access. And these cover the cost of um, publication, including running peer review systems, copy editing, typesetting, and hosting the article in perpetuity on dedicated servers. Um, so these are fees that are charged by the publisher to make the article open access. And this fee is only paid after an article has been peer reviewed and accepted for publication. So this decision on the APC payment is separate from the decision um to accept publication some people think that because they pay the article processing charge it means the article will be published quicker or they may likely to get accepted but that's not the case the decision about acceptance is very separate from the decision um, on how much you should pay it's very very separate um, so the other thing to point out that the, uh, the article processing charge only applies if you are publishing an article in, in open access. So some journals are hybrid journals where you have a choice to publish closed access or open access. So if you're publishing a closed access, you don't pay the APC, you do not pay an APC. Um, but in that case, the library needs to pay um, to access the content um, so they can read the article. And if the author publishes the article in open access, um, either in a fully open access journal or within a hybrid journal, they usually have to pay an APC. And then everyone can read the article for free. So either it's pay to publish or pay to read. However, there are exceptions to that. Thankfully, there are some journals that don't charge APCs and they are open access. So it's free to read and free to publish. And here is um, one example of how you can find those journals um, from the directory of open access journals. Um, so there's 11,000 journals without APCs. Um, so I'm just checking. Uh, the noise can be reduced a little bit. <laughs> so we've got 11,000 um, journals without APCs. Um, and quick note about the advantages of publishing in open access. Anyone from around the world can read the published article. So that's great because there's no reading fees at all, no subscription fees for libraries. And the advantages, of course, to the author as well, because more people around the world can read um, their research. So they get more downloads, more citations, more references and more impact. So really your work is exposed a lot more um, and more people can read it from around the world, from anywhere really. And there's no hurdles to access them. In terms of who pays the APCs, they are many times paid by research funders through research grants. Um, but sometimes authors pay them out of their own pocket. 
um, institutions paying APCs on behalf of researchers is something that happens more and more, especially within this transition to open access. Um, there's some type of publish and read agreements that cover the reading fee as well as the publishing fee. Um, and that's what I mean by transformative agreements on this slide. So you can have um, agreements that cover both fees. So it's really the library that negotiates this and then on behalf of the author. So the author doesn't have to pay anything. Um, and that's the point about the IFIL agreements really that we've negotiated special terms or waivers so the author doesn't have to pay anything. A lot of these agreements reference the term corresponding author. This is the main contact if more than one author work, work on an article together. So it's the author who receives the email update about the article's process um, and about the production process. And um, he, as the author receives a peer review decision on the article, for example, and checks the proofs and so on. Um, so if you hear that term, you know this is the, ma the main author who does the correspondence, really. Um, so let's have a quick look before we move to the Eiffel agreements, a quick look at the publishing output um, in Zambia. Um, interestingly, we've got a bit of a dip there in 2019, but um, when we look, so bronze is very small proportion, but in orange, we see the articles that were published in closed access. And this is actually declining when we look between 2020 and 2017, it seems to have gone slightly down. The gray part, however, which is fully open access is clearly increasing, which is fantastic. And the same for the hybrid open access, the proportion here is bigger than it is here. And overall, the output is obviously increasing as well. More archiving is being happening as well with published versions being put in institutional repositories. So quite a positive picture. And that means as well that the agreements that we have in place, I think, are very relevant to authors in Zambia, because clearly open access is on the rise and there's more, more interest from authors. Um, so so what, are, what are our agreements then? Um, perhaps you're not familiar with IFL as an organization, we are a charity, and one of the things the licensing program does is negotiate these agreements with publishers on behalf of IFL member consortia and their institutions and the Zambian Library Consortium is one of our partner countries that we work um, together with. Um, and to support this global move to open access and to help this transition, because we want to disrupt what's happening, publishers charging too high reading fees, as well as charging publishing fees to authors. We want to combine the two, but also, especially from authors for developing transition economy countries, make it affordable to publish and allow them to read at the same time. So we have put some agreements in place, and um, these are confirmed for a set length of time, and there's no unexpected changes. Um, so these cover discounted and waived article processing charges. And in some cases, it's, it's not called waivers, but it's called free open access publishing. Um, so they are part of a free read and publish agreement, which is really fantastic. Um, so the agreements that we have in place for authors from Zambia, you can get waivers if you publish um, in the journals with Brill, Cambridge University Press, the Greuter, European Respiratory Journal, the Institute of Water Association, their journals. Then we've got the very prestigious journals from the Royal Society, mostly science. SAGE, multidisciplinary, so there's lots of different subjects there. Same for Taylor and Francis. And then the Company of Biologists is very specific again, and World Scientific is broader. So some are very specific and some are multidisciplinary. Um, and then you're also qualified for discounts from Edward Elgar. So what we've done is we have put together um, some title lists where you can search the relevant journals. And we've also got some information about the agreements on the Eiffel website. Um, the URL for this is eiffel.net forward slash APCs. I'm sorry if that um, didn't, come, didn't come through here. Um, I'll be on the next slide, I think. So there you can select your country and you can even narrow down. And if you only want to see the agreements for free publishing, they would display um on each publisher page this is where you have the detailed information so you see how long is the agreement valid for um, this one for example is until the end of december 2023 what are the specific conditions so there you can go and check okay i see waived article processing charges no fees for corresponding authors from zambia 
and then you see different conditions listed for different countries but obviously you'd focus on on yours um important information is how does it work how do i claim the waivers do you need to do anything? Um, in most cases, we negotiate automatic recognition. So the author doesn't need to actively do anything just by saying I'm from Zambia. And if it's an eligible journal, we'll come to this in a minute, the discount or waiver will be applied automatically, which is really good. Um, and in some cases, we have some very detailed instructions with webinars that we've recorded. Um, and I've put those together on this slide. If you want to link to the webinars directly, they're on the Eiffel YouTube channel where you can view this one as well, <laughs> this recording. Um, but the most important thing and I think the most useful thing for authors is these country specific title lists that we put together. So at the bottom of each agreement page, there's a section that says, where else can I publish, publish in open access? and um, you click on Zambia and that then takes you to the Zambia download page, which you can also get to directly eiffel.net forward slash Zambia underscore APCs. Um, and there you can then click on the download button to download your Excel file with all the journals that are included in the Eiffel agreements from all the different publishers and you can search it by subject. So let's have a look at that. Um, what's important about the title list is that they get updated twice a year or sometimes more often. If I sign a new agreement, I'll update them. So please always use the link to make sure you have the latest version. And this is only um, journals that are uh, relevant for authors from Zambia. There are some conditions listed and different search options. Um, and this is the spreadsheet then. Um, so you'll see specifically, this is four authors from Zambia. You see when it was last updated. Um, so I did an update this month, so it's quite recent. Um, you can filter by subject area. You can narrow it down to show only waiver or free publishing or also include Edward Elgar with a discount. You can only see titles from one publisher. So if you say, I just want to see Sage or I just want to see Cambridge, you can use the filter there. Um, one thing to say about the subject areas is that these are provided to us by the publishers. So they are not um, across the board the same subject classifications, which makes it a little bit tricky sometimes. So if you tick one box, Arts and Humanities, another publisher might have more specific narrow down into literature and history so it might not show up in the same search so it's a good if you can't find relevant journals you can use this little search feature within excel as well to search for keywords within the title of the journal so for example somebody asked me have you got any journals that cover food so if you search for food you will this title will show up Journal of Agriculture and Food Industrial Organization. Might not be relevant, but it's a good way to search for keywords or words that might show up in the title of the, of the journal. So bear that in mind. Um, yeah, and then I just wanted to briefly talk about communication to researchers. Um, because from what I can tell, a lot of them are not available, uh, not aware of discounts and waivers available to them. So we've done quite a lot of emails uh, with these title lists directly um, to corresponding authors that have published in the last few years and usually get quite a lot of positive responses. So if you're one of those people attending today, thanks for reading and um, attending the webinar today. I hope it's useful. And if anybody has any comments on what else, we could do to to spread the word about these agreements and most certainly the conditions um, please let me know um, i've also put together some suggestions for the librarians amongst you um, on how you could communicate these agreements um, with your community by putting information on your institutional website your library website your news bulletins emails social media various places where you can promote and um, you could also target research departments specifically with the list of journals relevant to them. You could do some more searches um, on that. Um, but the library could also create, for example, a support for researchers publishing page where they, they provide support on various things. Um, so those are some of the suggestions. Maybe you have others that we could add, um, let me know. 
And this is kind of um, everything that I wanted to share. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that we also have an agreement with Enago. They offer discounted editing services to authors, which can be useful if you're writing up research and you want someone to edit the language and that but I really increase the chances to get accepted. Um, you might want to have a look at that agreement as well. Um, obviously, the waivers and discounts don't um, guarantee acceptance in any way. They're just conditions of, um, of the payment to publish in open access. So it's a little bit different. OK, um, that's everything I wanted to share. Um, I'm going to open up now to questions. Um, and see if there's anything there. There's one Q&A. Um, from Emmanuel, thank you so much for this excellent and impactful presentation. Is it possible if you could share the Excel format of the list with the authors directly using email? Um, yes, you can share the list as an attachment, you could download it and share it as an attachment via email, but what I would recommend is that you share the link. Um, so if I go back to my presentation, um, because as I said earlier, um, these title lists get updated. So we want to make sure you share the most relevant. So if you share this link, eiffel.net forward slash Zambia underscore APCs, from here then researchers can download the most recent version. Um, and, and that's what I would recommend. It also means you're not emailing them with big attachments that they might have problems opening. Uh, I mean, the attachment's not that big, it's an Excel file, but I'm just saying sometimes um, sending an attachment can, can be more difficult. Um, so I hope I've answered your question and um, let's see if we have any other question. Mm. I can't see anything, but yeah, I'll put this link here in the chat as well. Um, so we've got eiffel.net forward slash APCs. That's where you can see the agreement agreements and eiffel.net forward slash Zambia APCs is where you can get the title list specifically for Zambia. Um, I hope that's helpful. If Are there any other questions or anything else you want me to show? Um, I mean, I could do, I could quickly show you what it looks like um, on the Eiffel website where you can find the information. So if you go to Eiffel.net and under what we do, we have here the different information. So if you go to Eiffel negotiated APCs, this is where you see the publisher pages of the different agreements and you can then search for Zambia and you could even say I just want to see the free agreements. Um, for example, we have here you have been your spiritual journal free open access publishing you have terms and condition you have how does it work um, automatic recognition which is good. Um, and then you have here at the bottom, where else can I publish in open access? If you click on Zambia, you then get to this Zambia uh, APC's download page. And from here, you can download the Excel. So this is the best link to share, is what I would recommend. And if you want to look at the Excel, um, you can then, yeah, like a, you can use the different filters, um, but the other thing that's quite good to use is this little search box. So if, for example, um, if I want to search for globalization, this title journal and globalization comes up, journal of globalization and development. Um, yeah. You can do other searches, Journal of Healthcare, 
primary health care. It's a good way to find titles. And if you don't want to scroll through the, the subject areas, like I said, they might not all match across different publishers. Um, but you can certainly filter to show, to remove, for example, the 50% discount. And if you say, ah, the other information we have here is impact factor. So for example, if you want to see show only journals that have an impact factor, remove the zero, remove the blank, that'd be another way to narrow it down. Um, we then have also the URL to the journal, and this is what you need if you want to submit an article. So you can copy this and put this in your browser. Um, and from there, proceed with a submission. And so we get to this specific journal and here you can then, um, oops, sorry. From there on, um, submit, your, submit your article. Here we go, submit article. Um, obviously, if you decide to submit an article, make sure you read the, the guidelines, make sure it's relevant, make sure it's proofread. I'm not giving any advice on how to get published. We, we have done a webinar on this, which might be relevant, um, but just about the waiver, waiver and discount part. Okay, I've got another question from Emmanuel. Thank you for your question. Um, do we have any plans to include publishers like Elsevier? Um, not at the moment. We haven't engaged with Elsevier for various reasons. Elsevier have their own waiver and discount scheme. Um, so just read the information on their website and find out which journals are included. The only thing I would be careful of is, like I mentioned at the start, our agreements are negotiated for a set period of time. Um, so they are negotiated for usually three years and we know there won't be any changes during the three years. With Elsevier, I know that there's been changes. So countries that were authors are eligible for waivers and then they changed it to only discounts. So if you see there you're eligible for a waiver, then go and submit as soon as you can in case there's any changes. Um, but they have their own policies. So just look at the information on the website, make sure the journal is included. Um, so one thing to look out for is as well, sometimes these policies, they say it's only for fully open access journals, only gold journals and not hybrid journals. So when you are submitting, make sure that the journal is not a hybrid, but it falls in the, the relevant category. I hope that that helps. We are certainly looking to write, um, sign some more agreements with other publishers. There's a few that I'm working on that will be interesting, I think. And um, I will communicate those I work closely with um, NS from the Zambian Library Consortium. So usually any communication would go through her to the libraries. Um, but we also do probably in March next year, direct emails to authors. But keep an eye on the Eiffel website for new agreements. All these pages that I showed you, the new agreements will be added there. And of course, the title list. So if you work with that title list and you work with the link, if there's a new agreement, I will add the new titles so you will see them. Any other questions? Anything else you want me to show you or answer? Or if you want to talk, I can also let you put your video on and or just your, your audio and you can talk. I'd love to hear from you. Any comments or feedback? Thank you for your questions, Emmanuel. Thank you for attending. Okay. All right, if there's no other questions, um, I mean, my, my email, I'll put my email in the chat. If anyone has a question, please get in touch. Um, and I will email you the recording um, and the link. So if you have any questions later, please email me. It would be so nice to hear from you. Bye.